Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. To oh, what the heck? I got shoes there. Welcome back to Bonanza Disc Golf. Today, we are in Benton Harbor, I think, Michigan. And part of the fun of living in a van and traveling full time while also playing disc golf is that sometimes you guys shoot videos in a Walmart parking lot. Because tomorrow is my first MA1 tournament ever. I'm super excited. I feel like that's the division that I best fit in right now. But I'm also just excited to finally be testing my skills. And I will be doing tournament updates, so subscribe for those. But before the tournament, I wanted to show you guys what's in my bag because I haven't done it in the bag and things have recently changed a little bit meaning I'm not very confident with one of the four sections of my bag which are putters, mid-ranges, fairways, and distance drivers. Yeah. So when it comes to each of the four different types of discs that you're going to want or need in your bag, you also want a specific flight out of each of those. Personally, I tend to release my discs either flat or slightly anhyzered, meaning that they're going to go right out of my hand. Some people might throw a slightly hyzered like this, but when I release a disc flat, I want to have a putter, mid, fairway, and driver that all will either go straight for as long as possible with maybe a tiny bit of fade left at the end, straight for a little bit and then start to go left and fade is what that's called. And then one that's gonna go straight for a very tiny bit and start to turn going to the right. Let's start with putters. But I honestly only have two molds of putters right now. I used to throw a Sky God 4. It's actually still sitting in the back of my van. So I liked it a lot, but the rim was just too deep. And I recently, this week, replaced it with something new. But first, let's talk about putting putters. And I have these two retro pures. I don't think you really need to think a lot about your putting putter, except for getting something that feels good in your hand. And these feel great. And I like how stiff the plastic is. Some people like a gummy putter. I hate that. Then I also have two more pures, so four pures that I bag. This one is an Eco Pure, and it is super beat in. So this is that disc where if I throw it flat, it's gonna wanna go to the right for a very long time and not really finish too hard. This Opto Pure is my super straight slot where if I throw it straight, it's just gonna wanna ride straight for a very long time. If I throw it very hard, it's gonna go to the right a little bit. And if I throw a little softer or put a little hyzer on it, it's just, this is a point and shoot. This disc will do whatever you want it to, and I'm loving Opto Pure. When it comes to my overstable ones, some would call these mids, but I throw them with pretty similar power as I throw my putters, so I put them in the putter slot. Doesn't really matter, they're zones. These discs, I think, are the perfect approach disc because my ESP zone right here is very, very beat in. So it'll go straight. It'll honestly flip up to flat for me, but it won't turn when I throw it on a slight hyzer. My Z zone is very overstable. And then this jawbreaker zone I just bought because I wanted something that got less ground action, but I literally threw it into one tree and it already got this little puddle here. So that's kind of weird and annoying. The reason I brought these out is because I wanted to show you my backups. Most of these are putting pures, retro pures. One of them zero medium because that's one of the first ones that I bought. But then I also got this other opto pure, which I have as a backup, as well as another ESP and Z zone. Those are all my putters and they fit that slot. I honestly might not bag this jawbreaker zone tomorrow, but I might just to have a backup in case anything happens to the other two. But I don't see myself throwing it at all. And you need to have stuff in your bag that keeps you confident. It's a good disc. I just prefer the ESP. You're going to notice that there's a lot of one company in my bag and that is, well, I guess group of companies, which is Trilogy. They own, I'm right next to a Lowe's. This is the beauty of filming in parking lots. What a life. Most of my stuff is Trilogy. Latitude 64, Dynamic Disc, and West Side. Actually, Latitude and Dynamic. I just really like their plastic. I'm not sponsored or anything. If they want to sponsor me, I might say yes. So let's move on and talk about mid-ranges. Honestly, I have everything pretty nicely laid out in here. I got my putters, mids right here, then fairways, then distance drivers. And once again, I want those discs that are going to fill that straight, right, and left slot when I throw them on a backhand. And for the slot that goes to the right, I have this Opto Fuse, which is such a good disc. I didn't have it in my bag for a while until I started playing more wooded courses over these past couple weeks. When you throw that thing flat, it just wants to just turn, 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 never really come back unless you throw it pretty slow. But this is a disc that I think can do so much for me in the woods. Heiser flip up to straight, super straight shooter. Great disc for beginners as well. If you don't want a Heiser flip it, it'll just be your straightest disc probably for a while. Next, I have a bunch of the same disc. These are all Emac Truths. Personally, I got this because I found an Emac Truth with no name or number on it. And then I got one in a tournament pack. And so that's just because my mid-range because it flew well for me. This one I actually just picked up used for a great price. It's an Opto X Glimmer one. It's slightly more overstable than my now slightly beaten Lucid Emac Truth right here, which has that tournament stamp like I was saying. And then I have this baseline classic burst plastic. And this one is honestly pretty similar to this Fuse, but it'll have a little more finish at the end. It's getting beat into the point where it might actually become flippier than the Fuse. And honestly, a lot of that is because 
baseline plastics like this baseline plastic and this Eco Pure both beat in way faster than these premium plastic discs. But similar to all my putters, oh, one more real fast, is my Justice. This used to just be a utility disc. I never threw this when I was at three to 7,000 feet of elevation because everything is more stable up there and I could rely pretty much on my Emac Truce, my more overstable ones, to have the same stability as I thought this Justice would need. And this is just way too overstable to really throw. But now I've been throwing it a lot more on just lines where I want it to go straight for a little bit and just dump hard left or big skip shots with a mid range. Really liking this Justice. Great utility disc, great upshot disc. I've been liking this more than I thought I would, which brings me to the bin of truth. And honestly, it's kind of becoming the bin of truth because if you look in here, these are all my backup mids, actually except for one. Because if we pull the first one out, I just got these today when I was opening up my mail, and they are the Jonathan Forsberg fuses. And if you don't know, if you've never watched any Latitude 64 videos, you're missing out. You should probably subscribe to his channel, not mine, but subscribe to mine too if you're feeling generous. But Latitude 64, Jonathan does all their stuff. I am probably his biggest fan. So when these came up, I bought two of them. One of them is still in plastic sitting in the back of my van and I won't touch it, but I do want to throw this one because it looks awesome. These are all more Emac truths. I've just been finding used ones. So I picked them up. This is another OptoX Glimmer one with a really, really cool stamp. You probably can't see, I had to clean it up. It was really dirty. Oh, there's actually another mid-range in here that I didn't do. This is another Lucid Justice. And what's kind of cool is I bought this with my first overstable mid-range that I bought. And it's so old, I bought it used in Phoenix that it has a three glide number on there when they're actually one glide discs. So this one actually might be slightly more valuable because it's a little bit older. This I also found in the water, which was very appropriate, but another Emac Truth. This one is actually very flippy now. It's super beat in. So that one is honestly probably the same flippiness as my other classic Emac Truth, and I bought this used as well. Pretty similar to the other one, just to back up. I got a lot of Emac Truths right now. All right, before we get into my drivers and fairways, we're gonna do fairways last, because I'm still a little confused on that. Let's talk about what's in the sides of my bag here. And we are losing daylight, but what I really like about this paratrooper bag, and by the way, all of this stuff, if you wanna pick it up, I'll have linked on Infinite Discs, as well as Amazon with affiliate codes that will support the channel. If you wanna be so kind to buy anything through those links, that would really help me as I'm trying to pursue playing on the Pro Tour, as well as beating part 100 courses traveling in the van because travel isn't the cheapest thing, but I really enjoy doing it. In the sides here, place for two water bottles, which I really enjoy come tournament time. And then we have these pockets. And in these pockets, one of them, I keep all of the heads, all of the like bits for my little disc golf retriever, which I bought off of Amazon. Buy local, go to your local store first. Some trash that I picked up on the course. Probably some that I contributed to this pocket as well. Some sunglasses just in case. And then I also have my gaiters, which I would definitely recommend. I picked these up at REI. I'm sure they have some on Amazon, but these are so useful if there are any like prickly things that you might encounter on the course or in the grasslands. I used these in the West. They made a world of a difference. So good. Oh, one other thing that's kind of fun. This side right here comes with four of this size loops, but I cut one in half, which didn't affect underneath it at all because I left my phone inside, but you're gonna have to believe me that this holds an iPhone 12 perfectly. So I put my phone in there. Next, you got some front pocket, which I just keep a towel in. You can't put a disc in there. Up in this top putter pocket right here, which is where I keep my normal putting putter. I also keep a mini, which goes in my pocket when I'm playing. And then down here, there's another pocket. And in here I have a slightly bigger towel, another little mini, another little mini, but Anza Disc Golf minis soon to come if you're interested. And oh, I guess this is a course map from a really old course. Onto the left side, we have just hung off the side here, another towel just in case everything gets wet. I actually just got a chalk bag because I went and picked up my player's pack, some chapstick, which I also got my player's pack, which I think will be really beneficial, a Sharpie in case of any aces, as well as some money that I keep in here, just in case I find some leagues and they can't do Venmo or PayPal. A little bit of food as well, and I stuff these with some food when it is tournament time so that I have a lot of food. And then a range finder. I actually had this from an old camera light, but I just picked up this rangefinder today, so tomorrow will be the first day that I'm able to use it. Bushnell Edge, and I'll definitely have a review of this. So let me know any questions that you want about the Bushnell, because I know it's a pretty popular rangefinder. That can go in here too. Boop. All right, moving along to the distance drivers. I have five of them in my bag now, and a decent amount of bag, which I actually want to talk about. No, I'll talk about that side. These guys, I throw Rives and Grace. This Rive is new, so it's pretty overstable for me. Honestly, recently my rise has been going farther than my graces. So my arm speed is speeding up. I can normally throw my graces right around 400 and these are going 420, sometimes 430 for me. So that's pretty sweet. But my rive right here is the most overstable. So it's good wind fighter. It's gonna be if I need to get around a corner. Uh, second is this rive, which is very straight right now. If I throw it hard and straight, it's gonna turn a little bit and then go back on a pretty tight line, not as tight as the graces. And then this rive was the first one that I bought. I bought it in Las Vegas right before I won my first tournament. So this one's actually like hyzer flip to turn ride for me. If I need to throw a big turnover, that shot that goes to the right, I have this ride. And this is kind of the perfect encapsulation of 
what I was talking about earlier. If I throw a disc flat, I want one to go to the left, one to go straight, and one to go to the right. This one goes to the right, this one is straight, this one goes to the left. It's perfect. Next up are my graces. And honestly, I'm wanting to add one or two to my bag, but right now I have this Orbit Grace, which is pretty beat in. I had another one that I lost in Wisconsin, which I'm so sad about. If someone finds that in Superior, please, please, please get back to me. It was red Orbit Grace, super beat in. So this one's not quite beat in to the point where I want it, but I bought this first run Grace off of Emerson Keith as he was doing a little bit of a fundraiser on Instagram Live. And this one's slightly less stable than this one. Feels a little bit easier to throw. So this one's gonna be slightly more beefy, but they're honestly pretty similar. I need to do more field work to figure out how I like them, but I recently added some more distance drivers to my practice. I was able to find this one used, which is pretty similar to this Rive. I was also able to buy a first run Rive at a store called Disc Baron here in Grand Rapids. Not here anymore, we're south of there. But this first run, I'm gonna compare to the other Rives just to see how it flies. If you wanna see how a stock versus first run flies. And I found a Grace in a used bin. So I'm interested to see how this flies. Haven't been able to do field work, so it's not going in my bag. I just bought three of these Orbit Graces, I thought it was gonna be a different stamp, so I'm a little disappointed. Still super cool stamp. I'm gonna reach out to DD to see what happened with the stamp mess up, but I'm super stoked about these awesome Kristen Lupus Orbit Graces. And then, I had bought three, like I said, but there's only two there, because yesterday I was playing at a course and met an awesome guy who had one of these in his bag, the original Kristen Lupus Grace, and he traded me for a new one, and I threw this one time and it was the perfect level of flippy. Like this is gonna be that grace that goes to the right. Whereas both of these ones are pretty straight. I don't know if this one's gonna be the one that goes to the left, but it kind of feels a little more stable. I'm not the best judge of that, but super excited for all of those. And if you have any graces that you wanna get rid of and we're gonna cross paths, please let me know because I am always looking for some more. I do have the Kristen World Champion ones on the way. Let me know any videos you wanna see with those. But now we need to move on to my least favorite category Right now, the fairway drivers. It's getting too dark out. We're doing a lot of driving. Time for a... Uh, oof. Yeah, dude, it's totally not awkward at all to be doing this in a freaking Walmart parking lot right now. But the fairway drivers are my least favorite right now because the same place that I lost that grace, I lost a disc every single day that I played there, and it was three days in a row. I was bagging T-Bird 3s and Thunderbirds, and I still bag the Thunderbirds. I love my Thunderbirds. This is my overstable Thunderbird. This is my super straight. This is my, like, probably one of my most dependable discs. It'll just hold whatever line. I love this thing so much. But I was throwing T-Bird 3s as well, and I had one that was overstable stable, one that was straight, two that were kind of a little flippy, one that was straighter than the other, but they kind of fit that one that goes left, one that goes straight, one that goes right. These ones both want to go left, this one wants to go straight before it goes left, but they both want to go left. And so I'm still looking for that one disc that fits that slot, similar to how I have the Rive, that one goes right, straight, and left, and then both of my other graces kind of are just straight. They're just slightly slower speeds. These are nine speeds, and I like bagging a seven or eight speed. So right now, I just picked up a bunch of evaders. And when I say a bunch of evaders, I mean a bunch of evaders. That's a river. We'll talk about that in a second. So to try to recreate that flight, I was actually interested in the Ricky Wysocki evader, which I have here, as well as just some stock evaders. And I was able to get them at such good prices. That's why I bought so many of them recently, because I needed something to replace my T-Bird 3 slot, because I was only left with one T-Bird 3. I lost two of them. And I wanted something that I could find more than the T-Bird 3. And these just feel so good in my hand. The problem is all of them are pretty much new, except for this one that I was able to buy used, plus one that's in the front of my van. But Ricky Evaders, a little more stable than Stock Evaders, so those are still really stable, and they're pretty much still new. And this plastic doesn't beat in. I'm making a lot of excuses. Essentially, right now, I have this Ricky Evader, which goes straight for a bit and then goes left. Very shapeable if I want to have it hold the Anheuser for a while. It's always going to flex out pretty much towards the end, depending on how fast I throw it. I have this Evader, which is pretty straight. It honestly, it's kind of more of a lucid ice plastic, but it wants to go pretty straight. And then I bought two of these new ones. I threw this one for a couple days. I've only had these for like three days, but I played a couple short courses. And then this one, I was like, I need one that goes to the right, like my T-Bird 3. So earlier today, and this video is gonna come out soon, I threw this into a tree 200 times very hard. And now it's closer to that T-Bird 3, but it's not quite as flippy as the T-Bird 3. I think it will get there, but this Lucid plastic compared to that Star plastic, compared to a base plastic, it's just not there. I wish I had a Fusion one. No store had them in stock. So these are the three evaders that I have right now in my bag, plus four other backups that I keep in here. But I'm going with these three and really going to try to trust this one on to be slightly more understable than this. And it definitely is. This one will turn a little bit out of my hand. It's a really nice line. And Honestly, throwing it today, it goes about 40 feet further than this one that I didn't throw into a tree 200 times. So maybe throwing a disc into trees is the key to you getting more distance. But that being said, this river, which is a 7-7-1-1 negative from latitude 64, I really need to do more field work with it. It does have very similar flight to T-Bird 3. It's just a little bit, I don't know, it's a little different. I'm not super comfortable with it, which I'm a little afraid of because fairway drivers are things that you just throw all the time. So I'm hoping to really either rely on my Thunderbirds or really trust these tomorrow 
and then the next couple days of my tournament. Luckily, after my tournament tomorrow, I will have some time that I can do some field work to really figure out what's going on with these evaders. But I'm hoping the river does it for me. Just honestly a little nervous because I don't have my Team 3 in my bag. I'm not bringing it. I'm trying not to rely on it. I like throwing similar or the same exact molds. So I got those in the bag. In terms of backups, I have another river, which I just bought used for 10 bucks which pretty solid, three Thunderbirds. One Germ 2021 Thunderbird, which is pretty much a replacement for my pink one. And then this Thunderbird, which is slightly more overstable than my super dependable one. And then this is a 169 gram Thunderbird, which is board flat, which I love, which I think will probably be a replacement for my other Thunderbird. It's just nice to have these backups just in case anything happens. And that's my in the bag. I gotta edit this video because it's like eight o'clock already and I'm getting it up the same night because tomorrow I have my first round of the tournament right around 1.45. And then you guys will get updated after that. If you want to follow along, here's my PDGA number. Otherwise, check out yesterday's video for why I'm finally starting to play an MA1 after only seven months of disc golf. Like the video if you thought it was cool, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.